Well, welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Reardon and today we're making a Jimmy Choo shoe cake. There have been lots of requests for shoe cake tutorials and Lisa has been requesting a pillow cake every week since May. So I have combined the two. I'll show you how to make the shoe first and then the pillow. The first thing you need to do is cut out your shoe template and that is available on the website howtocookthat.net. There's a link in the description below this video. Once you've cut it out, also cut a sole from some thin cardboard so we can use it as a support while the fondant is drying. You will also need to cut a couple of other things out of cardboard and staple them together where it's shown. Place a stack of books on a baking tray and using your template for the side profile of the shoe, match them up to the right height and then open the cover of the top book and prop it up to just the right angle using some tissues or paper towel inside the book. Then take the cardboard sole and bend it to match the side profile of the shoe and set it up on the books and tape it into place. Take some non-stick baking paper and place that over the top so that the fondant doesn't stick to the template. Now to make the buckle, place some baking paper over your template and roll out a thin even snake out of black fondant. Then using a knife to help you bend it at the corners to match the outer size of the template and then trim it to the right size and join the two ends together in the middle of one of the sides. Then use an off cut to make the prong of the buckle. Then take a dry paintbrush and dust that fondant with silver luster dust on all the sides and all the way over the whole thing. Then leave the buckle to one side to dry. Next to make our label. Roll out some white fondant really thinly and put your template over the top and cut out the rectangle shape. Next, take a sharp pencil and trace over the letters of the logo pressing reasonably firmly. When you remove the paper, you'll be able to see a light indent that will guide you where to put the letters. Now you can either paint them on using black gel food colour or you can use an edible marker to write them on. To be honest, I'd never heard of Jimmy Choo before making this cake. I just searched for expensive shoe brands and found one that I thought would look pretty on a cake. If you want someone who does know a lot about fashion and makeup, then check out beautiful Cara's channel. Her channel's called Cara Emily, and she has studied apparel design and cosmetology and has been a licensed cosmetologist for the last eight years, so she really knows her stuff. She's got heaps of great Get Ready With Me videos and skincare and hair and makeup tutorials and some creative hair art and as always I'll put a link in the description below the video and I'll add one to her channel at the end of this video as well so make sure you check it out and let her know in the comments that How to Cook That sent you over. Next roll out some black fondant to be half a centimetre thick and cut around the outer sole template line. After you've cut it run the flat edge of your knife around it to smooth off any imperfections. Roll out some cream fondant and cut the inner sole template size and then rub a tiny amount of water onto the black sole and add the cream sole over the top. If it stretches a little as you add it like mine did, just add your template back over the top and trim it to shape. Take your toe template and trim across the cream toes section and remove that bit. Line up the fondant sole with the sole that we made out of cardboard and put it into place so that it's going to dry in the right shape. Dab a little bit of water on the top section and add your label. Take the tip of a knife and gently make stitching indents across the top and the base of the label. You can see here the sole has little crease marks in the fondant at the bend. If you want to avoid that, then put the black sole on the support first and then add the cream sole once it's in place. Now to make the toe. This shoe uses snake skin, so you can buy expensive snake skin texture mats, but here I'm just going to use a plastic texture mat that I use for chocolate as well. And you can get all of these texture mats in the back of one book, in a kid's book. And whenever I mention them in a video, people always ask, what was the book and where did you get it from? So I'll put a link to that particular one in the description below the video so you know which one it is. It costs about $8 for the book. Roll out your black fondant and then place a texture mat over the top and roll over it to make the imprint on the fondant. Then remove the template and then using the toe template cut along the top of the toe shape but leave the rest of it. Add it to the toe lining it up with the cream shoe lining and then use your finger to smooth it down around the toe and trim it off at the base. The top angle of your heel needs to match the base of the shoe angle so that they can join together nicely. So to make that, take a thin book and prop it open so that it matches the side profile of the heel that I've given you. 
then add the heel template and double check the angle is correct and tape it into place. Roll out a thick snake of black fondant then using the palm of your hand push down on one side as you roll to make it skinny on one side. Place it on the template and then roll it some more until it matches the shape and then use a knife to cut the angle of the top of the heel and then mould it to the right shape using your fingers. Do you know how much these shoes actually cost to buy? The real one, I mean, not the cake. And <laughs> let me know what you think in the comments below of how expensive is too expensive for a shoe and do you have a favourite shoe brand that you like to wear? Trim the end of the heel using a knife and then make an indent at the base of the heel. Next we're going to make the ankle strap, so roll out some black fondant, add a thin layer of cream to the underside and then rub the texture mat on the black side of it. Using the ankle strap template cut a long strip and wrap it around your cardboard support that is covered in baking paper. Then using the back of a knife make two indents near the end of the strap and add your buckle into place. Use a toothpick to make a hole and then add the other piece into the hole so it looks like this. After a couple of days once those pieces are dry take some black fondant and using the back of a spoon mix it into a thick paste with a little water. Use the paste to glue the heel to the shoe. And if you're in a hurry you can mix some Tylo's powder into your fondant to make these pieces set faster but that also means you need to work faster when you're making your shapes. Use something to support the shoe while it sets and leave it for about an hour. You can work on your actual cake while you wait for this or if you're making the shoe ahead then just take a break. Roll out a snake out of black fondant and add it to the underside of the shoe where the heel joins the sole and smooth it around and then trim off the excess. Take a toothpick and poke it into the shoe on almost an upright angle and then sit the cardboard support over the top. Roll out some black and then some thin cream fondant and using a tiny bit of water put the cream onto the black then flip it over and rub the texture mat on top. Cut it out using the template and then use your knife to indent down the back in two straight lines. Then use the very tip of the knife to make stitching marks down the middle. Add a little water along the base and put it into place resting it on the cart. Now I should have covered the card here in baking paper because my fondant stuck when I tried to take it off so make sure you don't forget to add the baking paper. Next to make the lower strap roll the black and cream fondant just like we have before but this time you don't need to add the texture mat because this bit's made out of satin and cut out the shape and you can use a roll of card here or a bunch of tissues might be easier and rest the strap over the top and join it at each side using a little water. Repeat that process for the middle strap, adding some tissues for support. You can measure how much tissues you need using the template, making sure it's the right size, and then add the fondant strap, dampening the ends with a little water. Carefully line up the edge and gently push it into place. And yes, you guessed it, leave it out to dry. Now this fondant is only thin and it was a really hot day here so I was able to take away the supports after only a couple of hours but to be safe I'd suggest you leave it for longer. If you keep one of your strap off cuts you can use that to see if it's dry enough you can test it and see if it'll hold its shape. Carefully remove the back support and then stack up some items to make supports of equal height to balance a ruler on. This is to hold the ankle strap in place while it sets. Then add some of your black paste and loop it around the back of the shoe with the buckle on one side towards the back. You could leave this shoe just like that or customise it and add your own decorations like flowers or whatever the birthday girl likes but we're going to continue to decorate it like the Jimmy Choo shoe. So to do that remove your other supports and using your template make your centre vertical strap just like we made the others. Slightly dampen the top of the strap and then the top of the bottom two loops that are on the shoe and attach it underneath the ankle strap and over the top of the other two loops. Now to make a razor sequins that decorate the shoe. Starting with the black, cut a thin strip, segment it and then cut one end into a point. Add a little water and gently place them onto the shoe. Make another layer that overlaps the first and then repeat that going up the shoe, changing to blues, then greens and then back to the black. Then we want to leave that to dry out. The longer you leave it, the stronger your shoe will be. For the pillowcake itself, 
bake four quantities of my red velvet cupcake recipe in a tray and then let them cool. Trim off the edges and then make yourself a square template that you can use. Mine was 23 centimetres by 23 centimetres. Put a smear of cream cheese frosting onto your base and cut a square of cake and add it to the cake board. Add a thin layer of cream cheese frosting. Each time you cut a square you are left with off cuts and you can join two of those together to make another square so you can use those for alternate layers. Use your knife to level them off if they're not quite even. Add another layer of cream cheese frosting and continue to stack your cakes up in this way. My red velvet cake recipe and the frosting recipes are all on the blog howtocookthat.net. If you go to the shoe cake page which is in the link below this video then I'll link to all the recipes that you need from there. Keep going until it's around 8 centimetres tall and then when we carve the top of the cake we want to come down just past halfway down to about 3 centimetres. We don't want it exactly in the middle because pillows squash down when you put them down on something. Fold your square template in half and then in half again to make a smaller square and place that in the centre of your cake. Then starting with the corners, carve down an angle through the layers just down to that 3 centimetre level that we just looked at, not right down to the bottom. Then repeat that on each of the corners and then on each of the sides, cutting down on an angle just down to the 3 centimetre level. Next use your knife to shave off thin layers of cake at a time to round off your pillow. We don't want hard angles, we don't want it to look like a rock, we want it to look like a soft pillow. So you round it up to the top and then looking at your cake from above, curve it in slightly at the sides, not too much, just a little bit. Now for the underneath, from just below that 3 centimetre line, trim down on an angle towards the cake board at each corner and then along the sides. Next, the key to making it look soft and pillow-like is giving it some creases. So grab a pillow and have a look at how it sits and where the creases are and using your knife, take some chunks out of the sides to give it that look. If you don't do this, your pillow is going to look a bit solid. Clean up all of your crumbs and then cover the whole cake in frosting and put it in the fridge to firm up. I'm using the cream cheese frosting on the outside here too, but it's quite a soft frosting. So if you're new to cake decorating, I suggest you use one of the buttercream recipes on the website instead for the outside, just to make it a bit easier for yourself. Roll out some fondant in the colour that you want your pillow to be and cut a long strip and place it under one side and press it onto the frosting. Then using some scissors, trim it at the corners and along the cake at the three centimetre level. Repeat that on each side and then cover the top of your cake in fondant. You can use a contrasting colour here or you could rub it with a texture mat. You can use whatever you want to customise your pillow. Then use a ball of fondant to smooth out the fondant and push it into those creases that we made. Then run your finger along to find the edge of the bottom fondant and trim it up using scissors. Next, to make the edging, you can do that by hand by rolling two snakes of fondant and twisting them together, or you can use a fondant extruder with a plate that looks similar to this one. I'll link you to where I bought this one online in the description below the video. I've only recently bought one and they've been very handy. You just roll your fondant into a thick snake, place it into the tube and screw on the end, then turn the handle and it pushes the fondant out. Then for this pattern I want you to twist the cord in opposite directions on each end so that it looks like the cord. Then take some gold luster dust and brush it on using a paintbrush. Add some water along the edge of your pillow and put the cord on using some toothpicks to hold it into place while that water fuses it to the cake. Then using the fondant extruder again fitted with the small circle tip, squeeze out some thin spaghetti looking pieces of fondant dust them with gold, twist the top and place them onto the corners of the cake. Remove your toothpicks, then measure roughly where the shoe will sit and make a little indent on the cake. And this helps the shoe sit securely but it also again makes the pillow look soft because if you put something onto a soft pillow it will sink down a little bit into it. Then add your shoe on top and your cake is ready to serve. Thanks for watching and you can put your requests in the comments below and subscribe for more cake tutorials, chocolate decorating lessons and desserts and don't forget to check out Cara's channel and tell her how to cook that sent you. Have a great week and I'll see you next Friday.